Welcome back to the final part of the Mon Era of Sonic Generations HD. It's missions time! In like, in like say, 10 to 20 years, when we get, say, Sonic Generations 2, and when we go back and play this, we're gonna have to, we have to rename this, this section, because this, this won't be the modern era anymore, this will be the, uh, 10 years ago area. I say we retroactively just start calling this the boost era. The post mon era. Oh, don't worry, we'll be getting to silver towards the end of this part, but first and foremost, the missions of the mon era. Now, while I had kind of resigned myself to covering missions that revolved around Sonic's friends, uh, except the one in Rooftop Run, just because that one is bitching, uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to a couple of that I missed out, mostly in Planet Whisper. There's one set at Sunset, and it's very alien, uh, it's kind of like an obstacle course, really pretty, and there's another one in uh, Planet Whisper Classic Sonic, where you use the uh, elemental shields from Free Knuckles, very cool, not featured in this playthrough unfortunately, but try them yourself, they're really good. Well, at least, at least you're playing Green Forest. I freaking love this track! Dude, it's weird how well Green Forest goes with Christ the Sea. I gotta get out of here! And find Tails and Amy! Right away! Blows up! I love that. Blows up! Okay, at this point we're kind of out of things to talk about in the, um, the missions and whatnot. One thing we haven't actually covered in Generations is the new Sonic voice cast. And I know a lot of you are wanting us to discuss it and whatnot, so, uh, Gareth, do you want to lead off with that? Okay, now, well, we already kind of covered Tails and Sonic in Colors, of course. You know, Ryan, uh, Roger Craig Smith, Kate Higgins. Really good, I think. I think they're both really, really good. They both captured the, the character on the role amazingly. I am perfectly happy with them. Uh, you know, if they stayed for the rest of time, wouldn't bother me in the slightest. Moving on to um, so many other fr friends. We have, uh, I think, probably some of the biggest sources of contention was Amy's new voice act actress, which... I forgive me, I cannot remember her her name, but in Sonic 3 Riders, which was the first game to really feature her speaking a lot, she sounded like she was impersonating Minnie Mouse. Yeah. And I know, I personally, I know Tom and a bunch of other people, that just distracted me. What? what? Not in this game, Stephen. Go and watch cutscenes from Sonic 3 Riders. Amy Rose literally sounds like Minnie Mouse. Gareth, you just missed what happened on the screen. Well, what happened? Tom got the goal, but he didn't touch the goal ring. Really? I skimmed it, but apparently the game didn't want to register me being hit by the fire. And who says Crisis City's broken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, but in this game, I, th I think in this game, Shaki sounds pretty decent, Tom. How about you? Yeah, I think she's uh, gotten more accustomed to the role. Doesn't really sound as squeaky now. Because I'm sorry, but um, Lisa Ortiz broke the sound barrier sometimes in uh, in Sonic <laughs> Unleashed. She was just so high pitched. This is stupid. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I, I will say what what is making him go. So he's he's going uphill on on a rail. Um, okay, so what is this going on? Tom, explain what's going on. It's extreme, it's 90s, it's motherfucking Sonic's theme from Sonic Adventure. The best version, by the way. Yeah, what do you think, Skylar? Oh, I think Smoothies is the best. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so Skylar, what is your opinion on everything we've said? Um, yeah, I agree with you guys. Yeah, you guys are right. I haven't got an opinion on my own. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think the, the other character who's probably caused the biggest sense, the biggest source of contention is probably Cook Thornton as Shadow, which I'll be honest with you, I think he, he did a pretty decent job in Free Riders, but unfortunately, we have that one line of, You got this, Sonic! Which a lot of people like to mock and just say he's not right for the role. I think we kind of need to give him a bit more time. But right off the bat, I would say probably was is it one of my strongest recasts? How about you, Tom? He sounds like he's doing a Vincent Price impression at times. Oh, Sonic, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F so imagine that Professor Ratigan has shadowed the Hedgehog. That'd be amazing. I'm s I'm still laughing at the fact that he's on a board. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just stop. Doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, but I still get nostalgia chills from this version of it. Doesn't matter. Yes. Oh, this is my favorite. This is this is my favorite song of all time. Like if I if I had to pick one song to listen to nonstop until the day I die, it would be this. I mean, ov obviously, it would be Steven's version of this. Steven, sing the song. It doesn't matter. Something, something. I will never something. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite version of the track. That's my favorite song of all time. But yeah, and then you get in the characters like 
um, Krim the Rabbit, which... Much better. Yes, yes, exactly. Doesn't make me want to kill myself every time I hear her uh, speak. She sounds like a little girl, not a little girl who just ingested 10 gallons of helium. I like to call that one, open your heart, in parentheses, all over your body. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the Chaotix crew... For the most part, I think the Chaotix crew sound pretty good. I mean, it, it sounds like for them, they kind of just went with kind of sound-alikes. People who just kind of sounded like the old ones. I mean, Espio, I like Espio. He's not as... He's not as in... As in he doesn't have an, such an extreme range as Bill Wise did in um, Heroes. Because, of course, Espio and Heroes would go from s- lines like, I've got a bad feeling about this, to Spirits Unite! Which... I never understood that. Like, what is happening with Espio at this point? Like, he's got like a knife in his ass or something. Char, I think, um, Charmy actually sounds a lot more tolerable than his his voice kids actor. How about you, Dom? Yeah, um, I don't really have any problems with the Chaotix crew. Um, probably the most, I, d- I don't want to say underwhelming, but least impressive of the voice changes. I think they just fit the role on that suit. What's what's odd, and something that a lot of people have talked about is um, Knuckles. Because uh, Travis Willingham, I believe, is Knuckles' his new actor, and I bet most people, when they heard him, just like, is that is that Dan Green? Because he sounds so much like Dan Green. I don't really understand the point of hiring a new actor who sounds exactly like the old one. What my guess is, what we what my guess is, is that the, the four kids con- contract had ended. And so I think that they just wanted to kind of distance themselves from four kids because, you know, all the hate and shit that they had been given over the years. But I think Sega probably realized a lot of these voices fit the character pretty well. So it was like, we may as well just get sound-alikes, you know. Mike Pollock, luckily, was spared the chopping block because at this point, I think he is Eggman. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, well, Mike Pollock, all the others... Have and you know, um, it, it's it's kind of well fortunate that's unfortunate for my point in that his previous voice, you know, his, the person he replaced is no longer with us. Yeah. So it isn't it isn't like with like say Ryan Drummond. We're like bring back Ryan Drummond. We can't bring back Dean Bristol without the use of the Necronomicon, which you know we don't have unfortunately. You Tom, know. is there a reason why you chose this level of all the others you could have chosen? <laughs> Again, like I said, because it involves one of Sonic's friends, and it kind of leads into uh, discussing the new voices quite beautifully, actually. So, good one, Tom. Thanks, Tom. No, Tom. Don't ever play that level again, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sonic and the Black Hearts. Just wanted to get that out there. <laughs> and then, uh, to round off, we have Blaze, who, again, I forget her actress's name. She's actually married to Travis Willingham, so Blaze and Knuckles are married IRL Fight Me Fool. One true pairing. So exactly, that that should now become canon. That Knuckles and uh, Blaze get together, uh, and 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 to get into him, Sylvie is now voiced by a famed voice actor, Quentin Flynn, who uh, who a friend of ours recently met him at a um a anime like a gaming convention, and he specifically asked what was the phrase that it, it, all the fans hated from Silver. And our friend said, it's no use. And apparently he just shouted at the top of his lungs in his silver voice, it's no use. So you got to love Quinton Flynn for that. Dude, this fight is such an improvement over the one in 06. Like, Jesus Christ. It's my favorite rivals fight, to be honest. Oh, yeah, man. I think the, uh, again, as Tom said, this is the fight they should have given us in 06. The only, the only problem is that not once does he say, it's no use. To be fair, I think he covered it quite nicely in 06. You know, there are enough it's no uses there to last a lifetime. <laughs> eat it! Eat it, you cheap piece of shit! Sorry, I just had kind of a Vietnam-style flashback to fighting Silver in uh, Sonic 06. And, you know, it's funny how easy it is for me to take down Silver nowadays, now that I know the trick of don't homing attack him, simply use the slide attack because if you use the homing attack he's going to grab you no matter what and you must have seen that glitch yeah, I think Brain Scratch comms actually showed it off where Silver actually can chuck Sonic through the level boundary and up into space you know it's typical really other people get really cool glitches like having their character thrown through the stratosphere and I get stuff like really bad slowdown okay speaking in terms of just you know voice acting and whatnot. Quentin Flynn plays Silver, much like, um, I forget his, what, who voiced Silver in 06? 
Pete Capella. Pete Capella. He voices him like Pete Capella, but he loses the scratchy aspect, the whiny aspect to Silver's voice, which really was like the most negative thing about Silver's voice acting in 06, so it's much more palatable now. Mm. And again, this this uh, remix, this is the, a remix of the uh, the boss theme from 06, so like whenever Sonic would fight Silver or Shadow would fight Silver, what have you, and this is again another remix by Sonic R-Man. Really good track. Again, a, a lot of the remixes Sonic Arman does, or Richard Jakes, if you want to know his real name, like, they were always have tracks I was never a big fan of in the originals, but I love these. Well, you you like this track from the original. I do? Yeah, you told me you do. And I always told you that you were wrong and that uh, horrible human being for liking it. Yeah, but you, you said to me about everything. Yeah, well... I told you I, I told you I like this game, you told me to kill myself. Katamali Damashi, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like the fact that Silver in 06 is like the slowest character by a mile. So for this game, Sega will like, screw it, let's make him 10 times faster than Sonic is. Oh, that's so cathartic. That is so cathartic. Yeah, that part felt so good. Uh, the best thing about that is that um, Silver is, is clearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way he can survive that. It's no use. Give up. and Stop breathing. I like the fact you didn't notice I have 99 lives at this point. <laughs> Tom's got 99 lives, but a silver ain't one of them. Now, one thing, I think I've said this before, but if you play, as Tom played earlier, but if you play It Doesn't Matter for the silver fight, when silver appears and the song kicks in, it makes silver look, look like the hero. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Eggdragoon, you know, what were your thoughts on um, Eggman having his Eggman song theme as opposed to his uh, Eggman theme from 06 to um, Colors? Yeah, the the new the new Eggman theme is not prevalent in this game at all. You know, the um, dun 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 dun. That's not in this game at all, is it? No, I mean it loses the consistency, but I guess they went with the more like fan favorite theme, really, because Eggman is extremely popular, or at the very least, it's a cult favorite. I mean, yeah, I mean it isn't used a lot. It's just used for like ten seconds in a cutscene and just for that white space time mix. I think. I mean, I, I'm happy they brought back because again, as, if, as Tom said, everyone lo- loves the Eggman theme. I think if in the next game they don't bring back the Eggman th- his actual Eggman theme, I'll be a bit, I'll be a bit upset. Dude, I love the Egg Dragoon Fire, both in Unleashed and here, and it still makes me wish that Sega would get some merchandise and shit out, because that shit would look so good as a model. Uh, yeah, 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 I'd buy, buy the Egg Dragoon. I don't think any of us could afford it. Uh, maybe one day, Steven, maybe one day. Now, this fight is drastically different to how it played out in Unleashed. Obviously, you're playing as normal Sonic, not the Werehog, uh, and the fight actually takes place, as you can probably tell by the planet's core below, underneath Eggman Land, which is a nice touch, because uh, you fought Metal Sonic in uh, Stardust Speedway Bad Future, you fought Shadow in Final Rush, Silver in Crisis City, and I have to say, next to Perfect Chaos, uh, this is probably my favourite boss fight in the game. They did a great job adapting the fight to uh, suit normal Sonic's gameplay. Well, now, what's odd is that pretty much every single other boss fight in this game and rival fight has been pretty much silent, except for occasionally, as Shadow and Sylvia hear them saying an occasional line, Eggman doesn't shut up in this in this fight. Oh, what's this? Look at him fuck the shit out of his cockpit. <laughs> Look at that! He's clearly, he's clearly got a sex doll where he's just violently masturbating <laughs> in his cockpit. Oh, is that how he powers his robots? Wow. That just that that just adds so much to to his character, Gareth, because he's also trying to kill Sonic at the same time. Oh my God, the draw machine at the beginning of Sonic Two. Oh. <laughs> you see, he 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 finally realized that using flickies wasn't effective for his robots, so he now powers them with semen. <laughs> Ten times more effective. Why? <laughs> because <laughs> it brings a whole new meaning to the phrase "get a load of this." <laughs> oh my God. You see what I have to put up with, people? If it's not chair buddy every other five seconds, it's a friggin' sex joke that I can't edit around. I swear he does this kind of thing on purpose. So, no, um, it is it is possible to not defeat Eggman in this section and the whole thing just loops. But as we're about to see in, in the cutscene that follows this boss fight, the, the uh, game developers clearly expect you to defeat him here in this section. 
You know, it's funny, uh, just before Generations came out, there was a massive leak of information, uh, and there were, like, our assets and so on, and the Werehog's life icon from Unleashed was there, so people were actually scared that he was going to be put back into the game, especially with the Egg Dragoon boss fight being here, but, you know, obviously, that turned out to be a bit of a red herring, and we got a, a pretty cool boss fight instead. Not that the original isn't great, I love both versions. Hell, Egg Dragoon for life. Exactly. Now, I will say in the start of this cutscene, when Eggman lands and he kind of goes like, Ugh! Mike Pollock's acting is so good, I feel bad for Eggman. Seriously, I'm like, aw, that old man put down and hurt his back. Aww. What, what the fuck were these guys when I was fighting the Egg Dragoon? Oh yeah, just, just come in at the end, alright? Just like the police. I've got the dub job done, and then you're gonna come in and take the credit, wankers. What are the tails do I gotta do? Fly at him. Now this... <laughs> this line is a nice little reference to our line in Colors where Cuba goes, He always beat you! It's like it's his job or something! It's almost like the, it's the same people wrote both games. It's almost, it's almost like these games have a sense of continuity! But that can't be for sure! I love the end of this cutscene. Tell says that and then everyone just strike a pose! <laughs> <Look at that>. <laughs> <laughs> and classic Sonic's not really sure, so he just stares off into the distance. Classic Sonic, I don't know what to say, so um, okay. Also, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard, I was fucking drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why isn't it ever explained? At one point, someone goes, um, so when do you learn to talk? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, they brought in classic tales because they needed classic Sonic to have an interpreter, and then he barely says anything. <laughs> yeah, classic tales doesn't interpret shit that uh, classic Sonic says. See you all next time. <laughs>